Hi everyone, we are here with Simon Brown, the legendary expert in the, the stock market, you can call it that. And we'll just be talking about some of our favorite shares. So Simon will share some of his favorite shares on the JSC. I will share some of mine and just a bit of research and reasoning in a very short period of time. So Simon, is first before we kick off with the favorite share, what do you think of the current state in the market JSE wise? So I, I think, I mean, our market's looking, and, and let's timestamp this to, to 13 April because stuff changes in a hurry. I think it's looking a little tired, particularly the resource stocks. Uh, they've run well, um, and, and both the underlying commodities have, have run hard. Um, banks aren't really going anywhere just yet, haven't got that traction. I think the, the one exception is, is kind of SA Inc., um, you know, the, the reopened trade and the like, but that's still sort of some way off, but we've seen some of the retailers come in with some decent numbers. Uh, we, we, we've got some of the smaller stocks, uh, some of the leisure stocks have run well off the lows from November. So my sense is we're kind of in a bit of nowhere land where we're waiting for something to, to kick us back to new to new highs. Um, and that, you know, it, it might be resources coming back to the party. Uh, it might be banks finally getting some some traction, although I, I don't see what will drive that. We've we've had the earnings season, uh, Capitec numbers out. Um, so I think it's probably going to be more the, the those SA inks that could kick us high. I'm not I'm not bearish. I'm not you know deeply worried about uh, markets. I don't think we're going to collapse or correct. Uh, I'm not massively worried about the inflation uh, concerns. I think it'll come, but off a low base. So to my sense, very much a, a sort of pausing for the next leg higher. Yeah, no, I'm with you with that. And it's actually crazy how some of the small caps has really performed extremely well on the JSC. And, and there's probably some foreign investors, you know, looking at the cheap SA small caps or, you know, our investors just seeing all the opportunities. So there's a lot of opportunity, but I mean, even those companies have run hard. So yeah. I'm with you with, you know, it's, it's a very interesting space where we are now, actually, because all global markets are quite expensive. And if you look at how South Africa's market has performed, it's been really, it's been doing very well. So into the juice, uh, if you had to pick three or five shares now that are your favorite shares that you are looking to buy now, what are they and and why? So, I mean, I would kick off with, with Purple Group, um, owners of Easy Equities. They've got some other assets as well, uh, but I think Easy Equities is, is the key one. Um, and they had results out on Friday. The, the results were weird because it's six months to end February and it, it's comparing to previous year, February 2020, um, where they had just eked into a profit. And then, of course, the pandemic came and their the second half of the of the financial year last year was absolutely massive for them. Um, and and that, that, that growth has, has slowed a bit uh, from the second half of last financial year to first half of this, but still growing. Uh, Easy Equities has done some staggering numbers in terms of revenue growth, user growth, uh, turning into a, a, a really solid uh, a profit generator. I was chatting with Charles Savage on, on Monday morning, um, and, and he's talking about how a year ago when you were sitting around a strategy session, you know, you, you didn't really have money to play with. Now you're actually generating cash, which is, is a position they haven't been in for, for an age. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the fundamentals are good. And, and the story behind Easy is, is simple, right? They, they make it easy to invest. They've got a, a large client base already. That client base is growing. Uh, people are going to want to be investing. It's kind of the, what I call the Bri effect. You know, you're you're going to be standing around a Bri on Saturday, uh, telling your friends about the shares that you own, and they're going to be like, "Hey, I want a slice of this too." Um, and then, of course, they've got the partnership, the JV with Capitec, where in the Capitec app. You, it's now just essentially a widget. You load it up and you can start trading. You're fecid and everything's done. So, I mean, and, and Purple has, it's run hard. Um, it's up, you know, it's doubled since, since I, in fact, more than doubled since I got in about a year or so ago. Uh, it's run hard in the last couple of weeks ahead of results. But I still think now trading around the 110, you know, if, if we're taking a, a sort of a three-year view on it, I think the stock's got way more upside to it. And particularly, as the other legs kick in, you know, global trader gets some profit going. The property starts to maybe generate some income as well. 
uh, and the like. So I think definitely a, a, a purple a, a stock worth looking at. Awesome. Yeah, with, with Purple Group, uh, you know, the Capitec partnership is also a great distribution, but I saw that their own, you know, what they're acquiring by themselves is actually yeah. more than the Capitec partnership. It's actually a, a good sign um, as there's much more legs to, to run there. Uh, for me, it's with Purple Group, you know, with, you know, where they're on now, I'd like to see them expand a bit more into, you know, stuff that they've mentioned, like insurance and other places, like you said, if the property plays out and all that. So it's definitely an exciting space um, and they've been executing very well to date. So, yeah, interesting pick. Um, yeah. What else? Um, my next would be Renogen, which is a, a, it actually came to market as a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. Um, and, and other stock that I hold. In fact, I will, all the stocks I recommend will be ones that I hold already. Um, and and they, they, they've got a, a gas field in, in the free state, uh, which gives you uh, a liquid natural gas, LNG. They, they, they're doing some tie-ups with Toyota so that you can uh, uh, buy the LNG at, at, at Toyota service stations. And the plan there is that you can essentially get, uh, convert your, your, your long haul trucks onto LNG, which is cleaner, a uh, little bit cheaper, um, you know, lower maintenance, et cetera. And that's interesting. The key thing though is, is they've got helium um, and their concentration levels of about three, four uh, percent. To put it into context, America, who has the highest concentration levels right now, is running at about 0.35 percent. So really high levels of, of helium concentration. And helium's weird. Uh, you know, just if you look at the helium market, it used to be a strategic reserve in America and, and now it's not. There's not much new deposits. It's in huge demand. I mean, we all know it from party balloons, but it's used in MIR scanners. It's, it's used in Elon Musk sending rockets to, to space and Mars and, and everything else. Um, and, and the demand for helium has been growing uh, and will likely continue to grow. But what we haven't seen is much new production come on. And this is going to be, I mean, it, you know, it's the highest concentration by a long way um, and, and one of the first new productions in, in a number of years. They've got their sort of first phase, which should kick in uh, towards the end of this year. And, and that's relatively small. And that's kind of a proof of concept in many degrees uh, that they can do it. It's also a lower risk because they can fund it out of available cash reserves. Um, and then they're currently doing a bankable feasibility study on, on stage two, uh, phase two, which will probably be about two, maybe two and a half years out. Um, and and that will absolutely ramp up. You know, that will ramp up. Uh, uh, production sort of you know 10x in a sense. They've got offtake agreement for the the first phase, so they, they they've de-risked that quite significantly. And you know, with junior miners, and 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 you you mentioned about a lot of the small caps on the JSC, there needs to be a story which excites people. Um, and, and we can see what it is with Purple, right? People are using the platform. Half a million customers are excited about it, and some of them are going to buy it. With Renogen, there's a story happening there, and it's also listed in Australia on the ASX. And, and, and Australians you know, love mining shares probably more than we do, um, particularly junior miners and the like. So you know, that, that gives you a second sort of impetus to, to, to send that, that, that price heading, heading higher. It, it's you know, junior mining, always risky. They're probably going to have to do, in fact, almost certainly we have to do a rights issue to fund the phase two. Um, we'll see how large that is. I was figuring sort of a two for one, but if the share is run, that could be a, 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 a less dilutive one. Um, but another stock that I think has got a, a decent potential going forward and in a different sort of mining space, not for traditional platinum or the like. Yeah, with, with Renogen, they've definitely got a, a good marketing team when it comes to communicating with yeah. the shareholders. I mean, the sense announcements and, and everything they're busy with. It certainly looks good from the outside. Um, I'm no helium expert myself, but I know helium is extremely important for life going forward. Um, so it's, it's, it's also a very interesting company. I see you like the two, two smaller caps. Uh, is there anything else that excites you? Yeah, so I mean, in, in the bigger space, I mean, Capitec results were out today. I mentioned earlier that, that banks aren't, you know, what's gonna leg them up again? What's gonna get that, that the banks generally and the index moving again? Um, but Capitec is, is just a machine. I've held the stock for, what, 13 years or so, um, since it was, uh, I first bought it at 20 Rand and then more at 40 and a bit more over time. Um, but they, just their, 
the, the, the business the way they work, the, the tie up with easy equities is so intuitive and so clever for them. You know, I remember asking Capitec, uh, and in fact, Adrian Gore on stage, probably 10 years ago, if they would get into stockbroking. And, and, and the Capitec answer was, uh, it's not their core competency, and it's not. So what did they do? Well, they partner, partner with, 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 with easy equities. Um, they, they, they understand the loan business. You know, they, they're incredibly aggressive on their, their provisioning uh, in terms of, of, of bad debts and the like. So, you know, last year comes along and it absolutely surprises them, but it doesn't, you know, wipe them out in, in, in a sense. And they can very much take it in, in their stride. Uh, back to paying some some dividends coming through at the same time after having skipped a dividends uh, last year. No shareholder of reference uh, subsequent to PSG unbundling them, which you, you like a shareholder of reference in a bank in case it gets a bit wobbly. But, you know, truthfully, if Capitec needs that, then they've got bigger problems and I wouldn't still be uh, a shareholder. And then, of yeah. course, they've got the mercantile acquisition as well, which I think is going to do great for them. Uh, you know, bringing them into into a new space. People who've experienced Capitec like the digitization of it, like the mobile first experience of it, uh, the way their branches operate, um, and have looked for business banking, but simply not been able to do. So mercant mercantile is going to be a slow process, uh, but I think it's something there that can sort of give them a, a, another leg to stand on. They've got obviously loans and insurance, they've got the transactional banking, and then they'll have a, a business transactional banking at the same time. Yeah, I actually met with Gary Fury, the CEO the other day, as well as some of the other directors and in the digital space. And they're extremely humble, but so yeah. smart and so clever and innovative. And it's, it's definitely one of the best run companies probably that South Africa has ever seen. Um, so it's definitely something quality uh, from our side as well. So yeah. Is there anything else or are those your top three? No, I'll, I'll give you two more quick ones. Other ones, ShopRite, uh, deeply boring, but we need to eat. We always, you know, ShopRite's kind of your banker stock in a, in a portfolio. We're always going to have to eat. Uh, ShopRite is an absolute machine. They are way ahead of the competition locally, pick and pay, spa, um, even on a global level. I mean, their operating margin of 5.6% uh, is, is just a staggering number. You know, most, most large scale food retailers are running operating margins of, of you know, around two, as is pick and pay, maybe two and a half. Um, the, the concern when Wati Pisson stepped down was, you know, what next? Uh, truthfully, uh, Peter Ingebrecht has proved that he is just, you know, a younger version of Wati Pisson. He's a, he's a good old fashioned grocer and, and, and they run an incredible operation. I'm disappointed they're exiting some of the African markets. I quite like that, but you know, if they're not able to make it work, you know, rather exit early than 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 continue to throw uh, a vast amount of money after it. Um, and then the last one is a little property stock called storage. Property listed properties had a horror year. In fact, it's had a horror five years. Uh, particularly the office is in a tough space. Uh, retail be okay. Logistics doing great. Storage is different. Those are those giant red buildings where you literally store goods. Typically during transition periods in life, you know, uh, downgrading, leaving home, getting divorced, uh, whatever the case may be. And of course, something like a pandemic absolutely shakes that up. We've always said storage is kind of recession proof. Um, and it is to a degree because as, as recessions come, people downgrade, but they want to keep some of their stuff. So they rent a little unit and, and you know, put stuff in the unit and the like. Uh, turns out it's relatively COVID proof as well. Uh, they've got operations in, in the UK. Um, and, and they're a fairly chunky uh, a dividend payer. The, the share price hasn't done much over the last sort of six or so months, but they, they, they pay decent dividends. So you get a, a nice yield out from it as well. And I like, I like a, the different asset class. I always want to have some property, uh, but the question is which, and I think storage is, a, is an easy win in that space. Yeah, just uh, my comments on the, the last two. First of all, ShopRite. Um, I mean, I do all my groceries and shopping at Checkers. And that extra savings card that they recently brought out, I mean, mm. how many million people already got that? And, you know, they it's just such a smooth operation. And if you look at their 66 app. The 6060 is astounding. It's insane. And I just see so many of those small bicycles riding around delivering. So it's also this transformation to digital and it's really an awesome business. And the thing with storage is, I mean, so many people need storage. And yeah. When a pandemic comes, when anything comes, you're going to still need to store your products or whatever you may, might have. 
So all five businesses that you mentioned I like as well. Um, I do believe that over the long term, they'll also be good investments. Uh, just between the two of us, it's not financial advice for those watching. Nope. Um, <laughs> but definitely awesome companies with great management teams. Uh, you know, there's there's so many good companies out there and there's always opportunities. So, yeah, thank you for your time, Simon, and uh, also for your input. I'm sure everybody enjoys it. If you enjoy this, this video interview, please smash the thumbs up and uh, help us share this and also comment what you like and why. Awesome.